Episode 6, The Mexican Rainforest Location, 20 kilometers south from the Juarez City, state of Chihuahua, north of Mexico, 70 million years after the extinction of mankind. During the Anthropocene this place was a dry and arid landscape, with few vegetation conformed mostly by small bushes and cactus, with just a few creatures bigger than a rabbit capable to adapt to the lack of water and harshness of the environment, this large extension of terrain was known as the Chihuahuas Desert, however now this place is part of the Great Mexican Rainforest, an extension of subtropical rainforest that covers around 80% of Mexico and extends all the way into the south of the United States. The biodiversity of the Seca region compares to the one the Amazon rainforest used to have during the Anthropocene, with more than 20,000 native plant species and several endemic animals that can only be found here it doesn't take us long to stumble upon one of them, a tiny yet deadly predator, this is the devil's frog or Ranita del Diablo, the reason behind its name is clear. A horned frog with a bright red coloration that communicates a clear message to any possible predator, I'm poisonous, very poisonous, the skin secretions of this amphibian contain tetrodotoxin, enough to kill a creature the size of a human in a matter of seconds. There are six species of horned frogs living in this forest, in all of them horns are larger in males which suggests a sexual display function, all the species look fairly similar and lead similar lifestyles with the main differences being color and size, the Ranita del Diablo with its 150 grams is the largest, and most flamboyant of them all. They feed primarily on insects, but they will gobble up anything they can fit into their mouths including other frogs or small lizards, on the other hand during their larval stage they will feed primarily in vegetation but will also take carrion if possible. Another rather unique feature of this frog is that they are bioluminescent, both males and females generally only produce a very dim glow that can barely be appreciated, but during mating season the intensity of the glow on the males increases drastically, to the point they look like squishy red light bulbs with legs, the brighter the male the most females it will attract. In a nearby tree we spot another endemic predator, this is the Mexican drider the largest terrestrial invertebrate alive, and the largest spiders to ever exist in our planet, the largest specimens reaching 40 cm in length and more than 60 cm in leg span, however not many reach such sizes and most of them don't surpass the 30 cm in leg span. They spend most of the time in the treetops where they elaborate some huge spider webs that can catch from flies to small birds and bats. These structures can extend for over 5 meters and are strong enough to hold the 300 grams of the spider and a struggling prey. They also sometimes use an unexpected strategy to increase the amount of food they can catch. The plan starts by going all the way down the forest floor, is a dangerous trip as here we have many large predators, next they will search for a frog and paralyze it with their venom, and carry it all the way up to the web. While the bioluminescence of the frog evolved to attract mates it is also excellent at attracting moths, and spiders that use this strategy can catch more than twice as many moths as the ones that don't. On top of the web we can also see a small yellowish ball, it's an egg sac, this particular spider is a mother, and inside of the sac there are more than 200 eggs, each one contains a tiny 3 mm long baby spider that upon hatching will extend its 8 little feathery legs and jump to be carried by the wind for kilometers, like a living snowfall, the dispersal help to avoid inbreeding and reduce competition and cannibalism among siblings. Several animals in this forest would be glad to eat some of this tiny spider babies, like the one for example, this is a leaf-wing lizard, a small arboreal creature no much bigger than a common fence lizard, they can be found all the way from Mexico to Peru, always in tropical regions with dense vegetation, they spend most of their lives in the tree canopy almost never adventuring into the forest floor. These lizards are very agile creatures and exceptionally good climbers, 
they cannot maneuver most of their predators by just running at high speed and swiftly jumping from branch to branch. On top of that if their persecutor proves to be too determined, they can just jump over the tree and glide, just like the now extinct flying dragons from the Anthropocene or the Cuneosaurus from the late Triassic, extending a pair of wings formed by a thin skin membrane supported by modified ribs. They mate at the beginning of spring, a couple weeks after copulation the female will lay three to five eggs inside a small hole in a tree or a small improvised nest made with leaves. The eggs take from three to four weeks to hatch, and the babies remain under the care and protection of the mother for around two weeks after hatching. We continue exploring the forest and after a couple hours we stumble upon a couple of strange bipedal creatures. These two are Ranudans, one of the largest species of a clade known as lemur rats, a diverse group of rodents that adapted to life in the trees more than 50 million years ago and became one of the most ubiquitous groups of mammals in the Americas. Most of them don't surpass the 10 kilograms in weight the Ranudin and the closely related giant Buntrat are the only exceptions, with average weights of 45 and 55 kilograms respectively. The Ranudin is also endemic to this region and can be found only in the north of Mexico. They feed on a wide variety of vegetation and invertebrates but their favorite food are fruits. They can travel for several hours on the forest collecting them and carrying them back to their nesting places. In order to efficiently transport and gather food these arboreal rodents have adapted a form of bipedal locomotion similar to the one of the now long gone hominins. Once we follow the couple back to their group we can see that these animals also dedicate a large portion of their time to social interaction, grooming each other, cuddling, playing with both younglings or other adults, or even just taking naps together. They have very close family bonds, and can live in groups formed by more than 20 or 30 individuals. Suddenly something startles the group. They all start running and making loud noises and from between the vegetation a large predator appears, and swiftly catches one of the panicking Ranudans. This creature is a Seagan, the largest North American marsupial alive and the largest predator of this forest, with an average weight of 80 kilograms and huge 7 centimeters long K-19. This animal is the Ranudan's primary predator and nightmare fuel. They also feed on a wide variety of lizards, snakes smaller arboreal rodents, other arboreal marsupials and birds. They have very flexible wrists and ankles and a very muscular prehensile tail, all that works in conjunction to make them feel at easy while moving across the treetops, they have been observed sleeping, eating and even mating at more than 20 meters above the ground, even when they hunt in the forest floor they will often carry their prey to a nearby tree before eating in order to avoid kleptoparasitism from both other marsupials or giant shrews. Seacans are very territorial creatures, they mark their territory with a special secretion produced by a pair of glands located under the base of the tail, during heat the smell produced by the glands of the females will change communicating to any nearby male that she is receptive, a male can detect the scent of a female at more than 12 kilometers. Three weeks after mating female will produce a litter f between 6 and 10 tiny pups, around the size of a tennis ball, that will not leave their mother's pouch for at least three months. We start heading back to the camp when we spot a small creature in between the vegetation, a female tamin tattoo. As a fully grown adult it's around 50 centimeters tall and weighs no more than 5 kilograms. The creature seems to notice our presence and starts to slowly waddle away The tamin tattoo is an insectivore, specialized in subsisting on a diet of termites, ants and ground nesting wasps. They spend most of the day slowly walking across the forest, looking for termite mounds, once they finally found them they will use their powerful 9 cm long claws to dig them out, and catch them with their long, sticky tongues, generally after feeding they will return to their burrow to take a long nap before start looking for food again. They are not generally aggressive but if interrupted while eating they might get very upset and if the intruder doesn't go away after the first warnings they will receive a couple scratches and bites, but these small fights almost never get to the point of causing serious injury. We leave the cute and grumpy armadillo descendants and head back to the camp but upon arrive we find it destroyed, after inspecting it we find a trail of what looks like footprints, but very big ones, we decide to follow them and after a few minutes we find the culprit, a juvenile contagigas. The Contagigas is the largest terrestrial vertebrate alive, 
This young male hasn't reached his full size yet and it's already around the size of an African elephant, surely an impressive size, however, the largest adults can grow up to be almost three times bigger. The Contagigas belongs to a family known as the Thunder Rats, a diverse clade of fully herbivorous megafaunal rodents that first appeared in the South American plains around 30 million years ago, and just recently spread to North America. Crossing the shallow and narrow sea that separates both land masses, they thrive in all sort of environments from tropical rainforests to deserts. Unlike many of their relatives they don't form herds, instead living in small family groups composed by a monogamous couple and their calves, the bond between mated pairs is very strong, and most often lasts for a lifetime, which in the case of these animals is a lot as they are one of the most longevous mammals to have ever lived with some individuals being able to live well into their 90s or even 100 years. During mating the males will not mount the female, instead they have evolved a very long and flexible backwards pointing penis that allows them to mate while standing rear to rear to each other, this reduces the stress on the female's hips and back legs allows them to copulate much more while using much less energy. After an extremely long pregnancy of around 19 to 25 months, the female gives birth to one single calf that can weight between 120 and 200 kilograms. The calf will remain with their parents until reaching sexual maturity around 15 years in the case of males and 20 years for females, after that they will live on their own for a while until finding a mate.